think you already know me, so I might as well just, <laughs> just begin. <laughs> I'll present myself. Uh, so today I'd really like to talk about uh, some of the work that we've been doing as part of our ARC project on intellectual property and 3D printing. Uh, we're part way through this project. We've just published a new uh, collection called 3D Printing and Beyond, uh, which looks at intellectual property and regulation, uh, which comparatively looks at uh, intellectual property in uh, the United Kingdom, the United States and Australia, and a little bit on the European Union. Looks at all the various different disciplines of intellectual property, copyright law, trademark law, patent law, designs law, a little bit on trade secrets also looks at some larger questions in terms of regulation. Uh, today I really want to talk about the cartography of the 3D printing patent landscape. And I guess I want to kind of pip up on some of the mapping metaphors from some of the earlier speakers. As the child of a couple of geographers, I'm very kind of conscious that maps are fictional creations. They are partial, they are provisional, uh, and uh, sometimes they can uh, be quite distorting and misleading in certain respects and illuminating in other respects. So I think we have to be very kind of conscious in terms of this sort of analysis may be revealing in certain respects, but there may be certain kind of hidden aspects in terms of the map. Uh, and I guess this work kind of picks up in some ways in terms of previous work that I've done in relation to other patent landscapes. So, I did a lot of work on intellectual property and biotechnology and there were very significant debates there about the impact of gene patents on research and uh, diagnostics and healthcare. Uh, I was very interested in patents on clean technologies uh, and how they impacted upon innovation and access. Uh, so in many ways my kind of work on patent law and 3D printing kind of picks up upon some of those previous mapping exercises. Uh, to begin with, I guess, uh, the field of 3D printing is a difficult field to be classified and catalogued uh, to pick up some of the kind of key ideas from Eva's talk. 3D printing cuts across a number of existing fields of technology. Uh, in many ways, it's a kind of a combination technology or a hybrid technology. Uh, so as we've kind of seen with some other emerging fields of technology, there's been an effort to set in place classification systems to deal with the technology. Uh, so I did some work um, back in 2012 looking at uh, nanotechnology patents, and there they set up a special classification so they could kind of identify patents within that field. They tried to set up uh, a special set of patent examiners to deal with patents from that particular field so they didn't do, have problems in relation to new technologies coming along and having difficulties in terms of properly identifying the prior art and making determinations in relation to novelty and inventive step and utility. Uh, similarly, in relation to 3D printing, there's an effort to try to engage in classification both at a national and international level. This classification is meant to cover additive manufacturing irrespective of the process or material used, and it's intended to enable a comprehensive search of subject matter related to additive manufacturing by a combination of classification symbols of this subclass with classification symbols from other subclasses. So this subclass covers aspects of additive manufacturing that might also be entirely or partially covered elsewhere in the copy of patent uh, classification. So that's really been very helpful and useful to kind of conduct larger data analysis in relation to patents relating to 3D printing. As part of the larger project, I guess we've used a mixture of methodologies. So we've kind of looked at uh, litigation involving intellectual property and 3D printing. I do a lot of field work with my colleague, Dr. Kylie Papalado. We've kind of done about uh, 80 interviews through uh, the United States and Canada and the European Union and Australia with makers and inventors and creators uh, engaged in 3D printing. The data analysis is meant to kind of complement those other forms of analysis by giving uh, us an eagle-eyed view of what's going on. But we've also been very interested in terms of how different regimes have dealt with 3D printing and larger kind of questions about innovation policy. We're also kind of hoping to kind of interrogate 
some of the uh, concerns about the hype cycle around 3D printing. Uh, so Gartner very famously has kind of created these uh, hype cycles for different emerging disruptive fields of technology, going from the innovation trigger, the peak of inflated expectations, the trough of disillusionment, the slope of enlightenment and the plateau of productivity. And it's certainly been the case in relation to 3D printing. There have been in certain moments of time in which certain aspects of the technology have been uh, very highly hyped. So five years ago there was a great enthusiasm around consumer 3D printing, uh, particularly with MakerBot promoting the idea that there would be a 3D printer in every home, in every workplace. Uh, that uh, grand hope has crashed. MakerBot has been taken over. We have also seem to be in a very transitional moment. Uh, Tech Shop has gone into bankruptcy. Uh, Make Media, uh, who also runs some of the US Make Affairs, has gone into insolvency and is trying to try to reconstitute itself. Uh, so certain kind of aspects of that kind of very consumer-based 3D printing movement um, seem to have faded away. Uh, but we've certainly seen the rise of a number of new sectors, particularly in terms of industrial 3D printing, the use of metal 3D printing, um, bioprinting, some of the health aspects of uh, uh, 3D printing, heavy use of uh, 3D printing in relation to dentistry. So the hope was partly to use this data analysis to try to analyse some of these interests and some of these concerns about what patterns of activity were taking place. We wanted to kind of build upon some of the existing literature. So the World Intellectual Property Organisation has been busy mining its data in relation to a wide range of new fields of technology. So in 2015, they looked at uh, 3D printing, robotics and nanotechnology. More recently, they've been doing patent landscapes in relation to artificial intelligence. Uh, as part of our project, we've been working with IFI Claims Patent Services, who've been trying to map patent families around 3D printing. And I guess today's talk is uh, an effort to grapple with that data overload uh, of an amazing amount of data in relation to those 3D printing patents. What we want to kind of do uh, in the last year of the project is look at some of the subfields in relation to 3D printing. Uh, and examine what's going on in some of those particular areas like bioprinting as a kind of an example. So just to take you through the work of the World Intellectual Property Organisation, uh, under Francis Gerry there's been a great interest in using data analysis to provide better information about what is going on in terms of the intellectual property systems. Uh, as the managers of the Patent Corporation Treaty, the World Intellectual Property Organisation, um, has a great interest in trying to map and visualise some of that data and information. Uh, in a quite forward-looking project in 2015, they tried to analyse various fields of emerging and disruptive technologies, including 3D printing. Uh, the study really shows that some specialist 3D printing uh, companies like 3D Systems and Stratasys are very dominant in the patent filings. But there's also some conglomerate industrial companies moving into the sector, like Siemens and General Electric, uh, and also some transportation companies like Mitsubishi and MTU Aero Engines have also been shifting into the field as well. As you can see by the top ranked companies, very much dominated by the United States, Germany and Japan in terms of the patent filings. You can see the huge rise of patent filings in relation to 3D printing. I guess uh, building upon what uh, Dr Humphrey has kind of mentioned in her presentation, I guess the significant concern about the concentration of corporate control in relation to patents in respect of 3D printing. You also see a very noticeable segmentation between corporate filings versus uh, public research institutions like universities. It's also, I guess, noticeable that individuals uh, are only making a very small contribution to those patent filings, despite the expansion of fab labs and maker spaces and hacker spaces around the world. 
In terms of universities, uh, I guess we can kind of see from the WIPO statistics that uh, Chinese universities and public research institutions have started to file patent applications significantly. Uh, and I guess that is part of a general trend in terms of WIPO statistics across other emerging technologies. Uh, but that also kind of comes through when they kind of break down the statistics country by country. Uh, but more generally, I think there are kind of larger ramifications here in terms of thinking about intellectual property and sustainable development. It's very clear that uh, patent ownership is very much concentrated in a small set of uh, countries, uh, the United States, Germany, Japan, the United Kingdom, the Republic of Korea, uh, increasingly China. Uh, but that does lead to kind of larger questions about the extent to which those technologies are available and accessible in other countries, in the Group of 77, even amongst some of the other um, BRICS members or the basic group, uh, and you know, least developed countries. Part of the big trade war at the moment between the United States and China is, amongst other things, about uh, some of the new emerging fields of advanced manufacturing. So 3D printing, robotics, um, other forms of uh, new industrial 4.0 technologies are being hotly contested. Perhaps this is also kind of suggestive of some kind of rivalry going on in terms of patent activity. Uh, but a very kind of uneven distribution of 3D printing patents. In many ways, the research that we've been kind of doing with IFI claims patent services kind of reinforces some of the work done by WIPO. As part of this landscape analysis, we looked at uh, results uh, in terms of patent families um, and really tried to look at each family member and uh, kind of select data um, from those representative families. It's a very big data set, so we have 20,000 patent families in relation to 3D printing patents. And I think that points towards significant patent thickets across 3D printing, both in terms of the general field, but a wide range of different subfields and some materials that are being used in relation to 3D printing. I think it's going to be very difficult for individuals and universities and even small to medium enterprises to operate within that thicket. I mean, we talk about the information exchange, but I think many inventors and researchers would be overloaded by the sheer amount of information that is there. Very difficult to identify white spaces where there might be new opportunities to do research and to do innovation. Uh, but a huge portfolio universe, just looking at 3D printing. We also kind of see really the movement by Hewlett Packard into the industry in a very significant way, well known for their printers and computers. They are pushing into the field of 3D printing in a very significant way. Uh, General Electric, Xerox, Siemens, Boeing, all kind of rated in terms of top patent applicants and assignees. So, you know, some of the startups are starting to disappear away from 3D printing. Some of the more general 3D printing companies like Stratasys and 3D Sim Systems have been consolidating their position, but we have some much more general industrial and IT companies moving in. You can see that also in terms of the portfolio status, in terms of the portfolio life. Um, and in terms of family publication activity, you can also see uh, tremendous uh, concentration in the last several years in terms of what is going on. Uh, in many ways, I pick up on my colleagues' uh, comments that there are real issues there in transacting with those patents that are there in terms of licensing them or assigning them or forming them into patent pools. We can also see a breakdown of different classes in which there's activity in relation to 3D printing. So it's not only B33Y, which deals with additive manufacturing. We see a real focus on materials in terms of plastics, uh, metallic powder, uh, compositions, soldering and unsoldering, dentistry, prosthetics, diagnostic surgery, identification. We can kind of break down various different subclasses in relation to 3D printing. 
Uh, and again, we can, can see a very kind of uh, great imbalances in terms of the concentration of patents. What we want to go on and do is look at some of the bioprinting subfield in terms of what's happening there, in terms of the patent landscape, and some other areas like metal 3D printing and uh, dental 3D printing. Uh, and we're beginning to see some patent landscapes looking at kind of the breakdown of some of the subfields as well. Just want to finish up with a number of conclusions and observations. I, mean, I think there are larger questions about whether or not there's a tragedy of the anti-commons forming in relation to 3D uh, printing patents. I guess from a general perspective, it's concerning that there are so many patent thickets building up. One wonders whether there will be abandonment of patents, but it still seems to be very messy in terms of working through that environment. I think there will be very significant issues in relation to patents and standardisation. Uh, but I think there are larger questions there in terms of competition in that field when you have big players uh, like Stratasys, uh, but also some of the big industrial uh, companies moving in in terms of what will happen in terms of competition and consumer rights. I think there are questions in terms of how you analyse patent quality in terms of the patents that are there. Uh, trying to work out patent litigation, I've been tracking some of my other uh, papers, some of the early pieces of patent litigation, but perhaps that correlates with commercial value. Uh, we've also seen a lot of patent licensing and patent settlement uh, in terms of some of those disputes. I think there are larger questions there in terms of what mechanisms do we have to provide access to key patents. Should there be mechanisms for public sector licensing, technology transfer, how will experimental use in the research exemption work in different jurisdictions? The US has a very narrow defence. The EU has a very broad defence. Australia is somewhere in between. There's been a lot of debate about compulsory licensing um, in a number of different jurisdictions. But I think there is a very significant clash between the expansion of patents in relation to 3D printing and at the same time the expansion of the use of open licensing in relation to 3D printing. You know, patents in some ways are not dealt with very well by open licensing. So I think there will be a real collision and conflict between those sectors. And I guess there's a question about uh, how that will impact the domain. Uh, and I think there are kind of larger international implications in terms of what will happen in terms of the ownership and use of 3D printing. And that will have ramifications in terms of international trade, technology transfer and sustainable development. Thank you.